Hey, welcome to my studio. My name is Shauna Shane, and I'd like to talk about perspective. This is a complicated subject, confusing to a lot of people, but I'd like to break it down to things that I think might make it a little bit easier. I like to think about it in terms of three different questions. The first question is, is the object we're looking at closer on one side than the other? If it's closer to me on one side, it's going to be going away and getting smaller as away. If it's above my eye level, it's going to be going down. And if it's below my eye level, it's going to be going up. So that's the second consideration. Above me, my eye level, that's the camera. I am the camera. So if it's above me, it's going to be heading downward no exceptions. And if it's below me, whether it's rungs on a chair or a table edge or the edges of the floor, it's always going to be heading upward. And so the only thing left to do, number three, is measuring how much the angle is. And so I'll give you an idea of what I mean. Let's see what I'm talking about. If if I am the camera and this is my eye level, then anything below me, say we're looking at a, at a table here. And if this is closer to me than that, then this is going to be getting smaller. And so this end is going to be smaller than this end. And this is going, both, all these angles are going to go upward. They end up converging somewhere along this horizon line, but I don't need to worry about that right now, as all I need to do is say, how much, how much is this angle? If I were holding a straight pencil or a stick, if I were holding it right there, and say that's my hand, holding this stick, what is the angle here? What's that angle? That's a negative shape that I can see, and if I fill that in, what's the shape of that? And when I'm putting that against something, a real object, that's how I can measure what's happening. And then if I was gonna measure this particular angle, it'd be the same thing. Here, here we go, with much thinner angle, see? This, this, this little point is very much more um, thin, a, a longer point. So same thing if we had a building and we were standing here. This would be going up but because it's below me. This is going to be coming down. This is definitely going to be longer than this. And of course, this is going to be longer than the one over here. So that's how, and anything that's, say we have windows coming, it's the same thing. Each one of those can be measured against something straight across. And then say we have another bank of windows and it's gonna be a little bit shallower here, but this line right here, that's gonna be level because that's at my eye level. So anything that's at my eye level is definitely level so that these are going to be going downward. This is going to be going upward. Say if there was a door there, it would be going like that. And this one would be ever so slightly coming down because it's above my eye level. This one's going upward below my eye level. So that means if I'm on a mountain, if I'm way, way high, and we have, say, little houses on a river that's down here and we have, I'm looking down at little tiny houses along this river, say this nice rambling river. I'm going to see these little houses doing what? What are the roofs gonna be doing? Because they're below me, so guess what? Instead of what we think we know, these roofs have to be going upward because they are, the 
below me. So all of this has to be going, converging towards that. This is going to be going that way. So anything, but the thing is, you will see them, the roofs going downward because that's what your brain knows and expects. And it'll look perfectly fine, but that cannot be if you tell yourself, if it's below my eye level, it has to be converging upward. And so, and once you tell yourself that, you will see it then. It's like, it's like a fact that you have to remind yourself of before you can see it. Because unlike the show me state, everything about art is not show me and then I will believe it. Really, you have to know it and then you will see it. It's not anything else. It's like you have to understand the principle and remind yourself before you can see it correctly. It's an odd thing and sometimes you can actually see the flip. You'll see something that you think is parallel to the floor. You'll say, that cannot be. I'm closer to one side than the other. And so it has to be going upward. And as soon as you tell yourself that, you will see it. It's amazing. Next, we'll go into the YouTube video and you can see me develop a demonstration that you can try yourself. Thank you. And so what I was saying before was that this line is closer to me, so it has to be longer than this edge. And it's also above my eye level. I figure my eye level is probably about here. And so if that's the case, everything above that is going to go downward. And everything above below that is going to shrink away from me going upward. And so this is just a matter of then saying, and by how much is it shrinking? How much is that angle? If I touch right here, what's the, what's the shape of the angle? between my stick and the roof line. What's the shape of the angle between my stick and the roof line? My normal procedure is going to be to fill in a tone. And if it's not If it's anything but light, I'm going to fill it in. So we have come along this far. I'm going to go up to about here. Come down to about here. I'm going to measure some of these later. Come down through here. This is a kind of a check. If I do this shape and how long it is and how wide it is, it, gives me a good shape. Here's a little shape here, and it goes about that far. And then here we go. That angle, and that goes how far? Probably a little bit further than that. And then it goes that far. Not, let's see, if I go a little bit more this way, probably just a tiny bit longer, straight down this way and then I'd say about here and all of this all of this is dark it could be a little bit darker a little bit faster now I will reiterate something I've said in a couple of my other video streams that I am doing only a directional one going downward. I'm not going back and forth, just down. It looks like I'm going back and forth, but I'm not. I'm just very quickly just going on the downstroke. That way I can keep it very um, even and easily um, then used as, as a shape that I can compare. So now this angle is not as steep as it should be. So I can see that quite easily. Now I have to kind of bring that up a little bit 
and there we go. And so we now have this angle right there coming around here. How far? A little shape like this. Right here. I could erase this because I made that dark when I should not be dark. Okay, so now we're going to come up from this point here just a little bit. I'm going to go up here and to not quite the top of the roof line and then that's a dark shape it's about shape like that just a shape doesn't have to be anything and then here we have coming down a little bit behind darker a little bit behind darker always paying attention to is it darker or lighter behind your object you can see something in a black and white photograph and in truth in any visual scene the reason we can see it is not because of the color but because it's either darker or lighter than what's next to it so that's that's the it's the value so that's the reason we can see is darker or lighter and so keep paying attention rather than um, is it darker or lighter than what's next to it and by how much is kind of a thing we'll be considering later. So this one is going to continue to be a little bit darker, maybe a little bit shorter. And now I'll do the same thing. I'll use this little shape because this shape is continuous. It's not about where the chimney is. It's about shadow shape that is one shape, chimney into shadow. That's not chimney stop. It's chimney into shadow one shape. And now I'm going to do this a little bit before I start doing this shadow shape here. A little bit of real close here, real close here. This is all fairly solid through here. Look at, um, there's no light through here. There's no light through here. There's no light through here. Look at how many spots. There are where there is no break, no light. So instead of looking at the um, the tree trunks, which we tend to be kind of, we're, we're probably, what, um, just used to doing that, used to seeing only the tree trunks. I want you to see the shape of the dark against the light. And if there's no break, if there's no light through here, that's really important. And if there's, then if this is an area of mostly light, that's important too. So I just want to see the shape of how the darks and lights go. This goes from here. Edges can be finalized a little bit later. It's um, kind of important that I do the shapes dark against light and edges are not nailed down completely because they might change a little bit. But look at how that has an actual change. It's like going here and then it turns, goes that way, that way, that way. And if I did a parallel line against it, that's, this is the shape that's in between there. So, um, but here's a shape of dark, another shape of dark, and a tiny little bit of shape that goes around the edge. And that, that makes me feel my edge, my way to the top. It might be a little too long, I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to come from the bottom and say, okay, this edge gets to be a real skinny, skinny thing right where, it, right underneath the, the, uh, the chimney shape stops there, then it has a little space where the plant comes up and breaks the plane. We have another little shape that kind of goes this way, gets wider, comes up every, there's no light in there, so it's, I'm putting a dark. There's a line here and a line here, but first of all, I'm looking at, here's the shape. This is the whole shape. So that will be about there. And if I put a a line from there to there it's going to be about an angle about that way and so now 
I can see if I can make the shape here. Shape there, a little bit wider here. That's about where that stops. I'm gonna go there, bring that up. Isn't that something? It actually meets that point that I put in the first place. That makes me very happy. That's like a success in the drawing thing that, um, that walking my way across these shapes and then walking my way across these shapes that it ends up uh, coming to about the right place. So here, I'm gonna do that shape, this shape, and comes around a little bit of a, a top edge shape that like that. Okay, so now we can do this shape underneath here. First of all, it's all dark. This right here is lighter. So that sometimes I consider what my students might think is a yeah, but moment. And so sometimes they keep that really, really light. But if I squint my eyes, that's all at least a seven into maybe even an eight. So and now here underneath. Okay, so this shape here coming around that bush is quite a bit darker, maybe even a nine, not quite a 10, if 10 is black, but it's a pretty good nine. And so I'll go down that way. We have this little um, kind of a straight coming down, then it goes over it comes down again, and then from where it does this, it skips a little bit, and then there's this point here. So if I look at the shape of that point, fill it in as I see what that shape looks like. Try to get this angle correct, the length correct, the direction. Now, I'm thinking that looks a little bit too long, so I'm not sure about that yet. This might have to come down because, or this might have to go up. Not sure yet. In fact, I think I'll start by saying I'm gonna raise this up a little bit because I think that needs to be a little bit higher. Okay, so now if I come around here, I'll do this. And we have something dark, I'm not sure what it is. It comes up like this, some kind of a form on the top, and behind that is dark. That gives myself an edge. There's another little bit of a dark there. Okay, and that is in the where the, the peak is. So again, trying to get that angle. What is that angle right there? It looks like about really close to a 45 degree angle. I would say I could be pretty safe in saying that's a, a 45 degree angle right there. And then that stops there and comes upward a little bit. And then what's this angle? And it has a little bit of a scoop to it, a little bit of a curve and of course, because I know what I'm looking at, this is much longer than that. This is closer, that's shorter, that's further away. So we know that. And so now I'm gonna go straight here and then come and continue that. So I'm gonna just, as I bring that, I'm probably gonna erase that just a little bit Thinner through here. Just looking at the shape, seeing does this shape match the one in front of me? And then how far does that come? Almost to the peak. So take that a little bit further. Fill this in. Go this way. 
fill it in. There's nothing light on that side, so that's safe. Take my time, fill it in a little bit. Now, this way, now a little bit of a shape, tiny little skinny, the skinniest triangle that you could probably make right there, coming through there, off the edge. And then, look at how very thin this is. There is no width at all to that little point. And another little skinny little point. Here's your, where that corner is. Here's where this corner is. So I make note of that and say, okay, that's skinny there. And then just a little bit closer to horizontal, but not completely past the peak of the roof or that corner. Then up we go, up we go clear to the, clear to that. And then this course has, this point continues a little bit further. Now everything below here is a value at least seven. And I'm not gonna stop because there's nothing lighter over here either, so. At least seven all the way through. And then right here, let's start from the top. This is a really good example. There's a shadow underneath that little overhang roof, a nice little shadow. And shadows have a way of being firm on one side, clear on this side closest to the, where it begins, and getting a little bit um, less hard and sharp as they go away from the light. So shadows tend to have um, a very soft, ambiguous edge. If you make this as a hard shadow underneath everything, it ends up looking like it's more like a crevasse instead of a shadow. So it's pretty much universal. I don't have too many things that I'm going to say are always the case, but I'm going to say that shadows are always made of soft edges. Even if they look hard when you squint, you can see that they're actually quite soft. Now here's that value. I've kind of tried to get that. I've tried to get the value of what that number seven value might be. And now I'll try to put in this nine right next to it. Again, starting a little bit lower than this piece right there. Down only, and it, there's another shape. It goes to a point. There's nothing light here, so I'm gonna continue through, but then get a little bit darker as it comes around what evidently is a bush, but I don't care, it's just a shape. I don't care what it is. If I make it the right shape, it'll be what it is. And I found that out. I don't take, in fact, if I spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the heck something is, it's almost like that gets in my way because then I have to make it right and and it seems like it just gets way out of proportion in terms of how important something is. So here we have this shape coming down, coming around. There's another, ah, oh, this is a really nice shape. Shadow shape, piece of light, surface, side. This is the surface of this, and this is the side. The light's showing, shining here, the light's shining here. That's the surface, this is the side. This is surface, this is side. It's it's universal. Whatever is reflecting light the most is going to be usually the top of something reflecting the surface. And that is the next lightest thing to the um, source of light, which of course is the sky. And the source of light is the sun 
in the sky. That's always supposed to be your lightest thing in your composition. Now this I have to put to about a, what, six, at least a six. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. I don't see a whole lot of change from front to back. I will modify that in a bit because one of my rules is that any roof line, especially like this one, should have, now oh, that's a little bit too long right there, should have a little bit more um, of warmth or darker light. We should have some change from front to back. So if my light is coming the same. If the roof gets a little bit darker and let's say closer to the where the shadow starts, it's going to be a little bit darker and then lighten a little bit as it comes towards me. I'm going to clean the shape here up a little bit and of course this is certainly needs to be more vertical and we can straighten that out and now we can restate this shadow shape it's a cast shadow it tends to look like an hole in the roof i am using it as a, a way to measure this shape, which is obviously wider here and more narrow there. But the shadow itself, I'm going to probably de-emphasize because it's a cast shadow can be lighter than it, than it seems to be in the photograph. It can be even eliminated if, if if the light were just a little bit different, the cast shadow would be in a different place. So therefore, if cast shadows help you in your painting and your artwork, that's good. If they don't, you can leave them out. My favorite example is a shadow on the side of somebody's face cast by the nose. Sometimes that does not help the portrait so you leave it out because if the light moved just a little tiny bit, there it would be, it would be not the same. Now I was talking about surface and side. So we have, this is surface, but there is nothing in this whole bush, nothing at all that's lighter than a four and a half, even into a five. So since I see no light areas, none, then I go ahead and make the whole thing the dark the the darkness of the lightest part of it. So in other words, that's as dark, that's as light as it gets right there. That's quite a bit darker than that is, you see. So that's really important that you don't say this is light compared to this. No, how light is it compared to this? That's your lightest thing. So that's um, certainly not anything lighter than about a four or five. And then everything below that, without exception, is pretty dark. Coming up a little bit, going, I can't even see the edge here, so I'm not gonna make an edge. There's no edge there, so there it goes. If I don't see an edge, I don't put it in edge. Just because I know there has to be one, that's a coloring book thing. I'm not a coloring book artist, so therefore if a shadow slides into another shadow, that's actually the sign of experience and confidence. It's only people that are nervous about making a mistake that they think they have to identify every edge of every object, even if they can't see it interesting how the more experience you have, the more willing you are to let edges be lost.
actually found in my journeys that um, beginning artists literally can't can't let up an edge be. lost. They, it, it's just really hard for somebody as a beginning artist to not make an outline around everything and so it's kind of a sign of experience and education that you realize that um, the edges should have a lot of variety. We should um, see some edges to be small, short, some long, some hard, some soft, much variety found in edges. Okay, so now we're going to come down here. This has to be darker. Look at how um, I've got that as about a five. It needs to be quite a bit darker. So here we go. As soon as I identify something, I try to make it happen so that it, um, that way I can immediately compare values to values. So now we're kind of coming to where this shape a little bit darker at the edge. This shape, this is an example of a shape inside of an area of light. So this shape right here looks to be as dark as any other dark, but it cannot be because it's surrounded by lighter area, larger, lighter area. So it is by definition and by the science of light bouncing around, it's going to be, that's going to be lighter than this one because it's smaller and it's sitting inside of an, a light area. So if I make that as dark as this, it will be way too important. So a light area surrounded by a lot of dark will be influenced by that dark and a dark area surrounded by a lot of light will be influenced by that light. Here we go. This is above my eye level. It's closer here, further here. So here's my direction going down. Come a little bit closer here. And this one is going up because it's below me. So let's come down by the edge of that bush. There's a point. It goes pretty much, this is almost parallel to the bottom of the, my reference. A little bit going down, a little bit going down. This is all dark. I don't see anything light in here. Fill it in. If there's something a little bit lighter, it will be defined by what's dark behind it. But it can't be, this cannot be as light as that, and that can't be as light as that. It's all kind of a, a series of comparisons. And this comes like this. Here we go. A little bit of a piece that goes like that. And this one is going to come over here. Again, there's nothing in this area that I see that's as light as that or as light as the sky. So saying that to myself, like Captain Picard, I make it so. With an even downstroke. This is pretty light here, so I'm going to stop there. So this gets blended to about a, what, a three, four? like that. Now, now we have all of this is darker than all of this. So that's the first thing I say. Where's my biggest shapes that I can be confident and even, I'm going to even include this, all of this darker than what's above it. Okay, so let's come down here, make this like a little tiny triangle, skinny little triangle there, going up, 
another skinny little triangle here. That goes almost straight up there. Now I can say pretty safely. Let's see if I need another piece of charcoal. This is too noisy. I'm gonna get another piece. Okay, so this all has to be really, really dark, like to tan. And down, 10, fill it in, go almost straight up. And then inside of this, I can see that this needs to be a little bit darker. Still there, across here, up into here. This is the shape. Then I try to say, okay, almost all of this, a little bit lighter than everything else. So that's again, a little bit darker through here and then coming into that little piece right there and then we'll go just a little bit darker more through here and through here and if I darken that enough and darken that enough then this actually starts to look a little bit lighter so I'm trying really hard to see <coughs> and this is a little darker than that. That's a little bit pretty dark at the bottom. Now we have a couple of a little bit in the middle, a little darker, a little darker towards the bottom. And then some smaller shapes. So and then of course we've got some subtle things going on with it with the yard. I'm just going to put it in really quickly and blend it so that we can um, see it's not exactly completely light, but it's close. It's actually blown out a little bit. Now we have a direction change here. It comes this way. And again, above that, nothing but dark. So let's fill that in. We'll start with the nine or eight, maybe and then go to the 9 or 10 around and a little bit darker right ends of here and things start to emerge a little bit okay now with some cleanup and of course a little bit of um after i have the branches or the foliage made i can very softly and very um, tentatively, section by section, fill in where I think things should be darker. And if I'm thinking in terms of tone and shadow shape, it's not so much trunks, it's just areas. Okay, and then through here, this is all solid. Comes over here solid, comes through here solid, comes across here. This is going to be, um, this is a little bit of a light area surrounded by dark. So I'm gonna make it darker here, darker here, darker here. Now that looks pretty light, doesn't it? And then darker over here. I don't see anything but dark right through here. Aha, uh -huh. there's a little bit of an open space there. And, you know, that little piece right there, I'm not sure what that is. So I'm going to ignore that and let this dark. Let's leave it dark on the roof, a little bit cleaner. And then, let's just do that shape here. the same thing. This is a little bit further away from the light, so I'm going to make it a tiny little bit darker and make this just a little bit lighter towards the light. So this one doesn't deserve to be quite as 
I guess the front one so that I can pull it in a little bit. This is certainly darker. Fill that in a little bit. And of course we have a ton over here. There's nothing over here that's completely so that I can fill it in. Now let's see what we have. I'm anxious to um, compare what I have here with what my line drawing was and indicated. See if I can make a comparison. As I come up here, we're gonna have a space there. We're gonna have a little piece that comes up here. It's continuous up through that way. We have another little piece right there. Comes down, another shadow shape there. edges can be cleaned up so easily it's not I don't consider it something that I fuss about too much it's just almost like a, a reward at the end I enjoy putting in a little bit of a some clean edges some places and letting other places stay real soft right there. Definitely a little bit of a stronger point right there. This would be all definitely darker. Again, that, that's gotten too light now. 